Yay! Okay, so we're going to talk about how to display quantitative variables. So displaying quantitative, quantitative, oh, there we go, I said it right that time. Variables. So, so this is different because now these are the ones that your answers are numerical. We can find the average for, and um, we can find the center. There's finding a numerical number is makes sense for this categorical data does not so there are four types that you guys are supposed to know how to do not right now but you will have to know how to do so the first one is by far one of my favorites but we don't use it very much it's a dot plot you guys dot plots are great but it's not very um user friendly if you have lots and lots of data right it's great if you have a small small data and I am going to get my little, the handy dandy survey up and running and we're gonna do all this stuff. It's gonna be so much fun. Okay, the next one is a stem plot. I use, I'll be honest, when I'm doing votes, you guys, cause I'm a senior class advisor, when I do votes, this is what I do. I do a stem plot. Um, anything that I have to do with vote wise, I do a stem plot, I put my stems in order, I put my leaves in order, and I can figure out the top 15. Stem plot, again, not very good for um, a lot of data, but very good for small sets of data. So that's nice. Box plot, this is where we're looking, a box plot, we're looking at, um, a lot of large, looking at a large set of data. And so looking at the individual doesn't help us. So we can make a box plot. And the last one that we use for large sets of data are histogram. So dot plot and stem plots, good for small sets of data. Box plots and histogram for those large sets. Now, these are all for one variables. We're only looking at one variable. We've collected, maybe we've collected a lot of variables, but we're only looking at one. Okay, so right now, what we're studying is univariate data. In the two-way categorical tables, we were looking at two variables and how maybe their association. This, we're looking at one um, variable, and we're going to find the, we're going to, so now, we're gonna have one variable and we're gonna talk about the shape, the center, and we're gonna talk about spread. Right now, we don't know. We, we're gonna act like we don't know what center means and we're gonna look at something and we're gonna say the center is roughly around here. Once we get past graphing it, so right now all we're doing is we're looking at a graph. We're either gonna make one or we're gonna look at one. And we're gonna look at it and we're gonna talk about its shape. We're gonna talk about its center. We're gonna talk about its spread. The other thing you need to know, thank you, Stephen. The other thing you need to know is that when you talk about a graph and you've done it, um, you've done it um, visually, because that's what a graph is visually, and you talk about shape, center, and spread, you're also gonna talk about gaps and clusters. Like, are there gaps? And you'll notice in a histogram, you're gonna see gaps. In a box plot, you're not gonna see those gaps as much, but in a histogram, you will. So now we're gonna talk about the difference between a box plot and a histogram. How am I doing? Okay, so I'm gonna move this up. So again, you guys, when you're using this display, we're gonna talk about shape, center, spread, and you might wanna add gaps and clusters. I gotta make sure these are good for you. Okay. I'm gonna move that up. Now, what is a box plot? So a box plot shows less detail than a histogram, believe it or not. Okay. You actually can, and we're gonna, when we use our calculators, we're, I'm gonna show you how to do this. This is kind of cool. Be, um, the calculator can do it, and you, you will see a lot of um, 
stats questions like this, but you can use side-by-side -side comparison. I used a blue, blue. When I first started teaching, I thought boss plots only went horizontally, right? Well, in stats, we look at a lot of vertically drawn. They really like the vertically drawn um, box plots. You guys, there's nothing wrong with a horizontal box plot, believe me. But a lot of times when they're using, I would say most of the time, when they're using a side-by-side -side comparison, it's usually gonna be vertical. It has a numerical scale. So the box plot uses the median. So we need to find the median. And the median is the center, right? You guys remember how to find the median? The median is the center from smallest to largest. I'm also, remind me, I'm going to tell you how to use your calculator to find the center. There's two ways to find the median in your calculator, okay? Um, and then you need to find, we call it the, low ex the lower extreme. Quartile 1. Quartile 3 and the upper extreme. Am I writing, am I writing neat enough for you? Okay. Now, this is where people, when they look at a box plot, they're like, I can tell a little bit, but we're gonna practice this because it is one of those things that when you look at a box plot, you can find symmetry and we're going to talk about where to look for that symmetry. And we're going to talk about skewness. You guys, if you type the word skewness into your computer, it is going to put a little red mark that says you spelt it incorrectly. Please trust me when I tell you that it is an actual word. It is called skewness. Okay? So it just means how is it skewed, right? Skewed to the right, skewed to the left. Can you tell? You just know it's skewed, right? The other thing is you're going to show symmetry. I didn't say it was symmetrical, I said it shows symmetry. You have to be very careful when you, when you are talking, especially in statistics, about um, symmetry. Because we never say things are symmetrical. We say they are approximately symmetrical because we are dealing with live data. And in live data, data live data is never symmetrical. It might look symmetrical, that means, and if it looks symmetrical, that means it's approximately symmetrical, okay? Now, histograms. Most histograms, okay, so most common, they're the most common graph of the distribution of one quantitative variable. Okay, a histogram is a good way to display large sets of data. Intervals need to be equal or same width. Is it time? Okay. We're going to finish this. I'm finishing this. Okay, the shape or the distribution, okay? So we would say the sh we would say the shape, the distribution is when describing a distribution look for major peaks. Not minors, not minor ups and downs and bars of the histogram, 
but you're looking for those major peaks and we're looking for outliers, something that look that's, you know, that doesn't look right on the outside. And we're looking for, look at this, looking for rough symmetry or clear skewness. And I just wrote that all in blue because I wanted to brush and get it done. So again, we're looking for those major outliers. not major outliers, those major peaks. We're looking for clear outliers and we're looking for rough skewness. Remember I just said that rough skewness or clear, I mean rough symmetry or clear skewness.